Hey everyone, welcome to the top 10 list. Welcome to my top 10 favorite Robert Altman movies. Yes, Robert Altman, amazing filmmaker, such a good, freaking amazing director who is a very unique and distinct style, which I feel like I say a lot about a lot of different filmmakers, but you know what? It's true with this guy. Uh, he makes a lot of different genres and stuff. He's great at comedies and dramas and murder mysteries and thrillers and musicals and all that kind of shit. I just love Robert Altman. Now, I love that... A lot of his movies, he brings in a lot of big A-list actors, and he gets great performances out of them, and he just tells really great stories, and I really love his work, and I finally got to watch all his films. It took almost years to do, because I was planning on, planning on doing a top 10 favorite Robert Altman, Altman movies, uh, like two years ago, so I decided to watch his films, but I kept going, I kept putting on and off and stuff, and I just watched movies every few months of his and stuff, and I finally seen his entire filmography, so I can finally do my favorite Robert Altman movie, so yay, so let's get to it. Here is my top 10 personal, personal favorite Robert Altman movies, and yes, and as always before a top 10 list, you gotta have your honorable mentions. My honorable, my honorable mentions are Kansas City, Vincent, Vincent and Theo, Fool for Love, A Wedding, Three Women, California Split and Brewster McCloud, all really great films, just could make the top 10 list, but it didn't make my top 10 list, my number 10. My number 10 is a film I think most people would have on their like top 5 favorite Robert Altman movies, but I love a lot of his under or underappreciated films, so yeah. This is a big one, this is one of, the most po his, one of his most popular films. I love it, but it's just not my favorite, and that's Nashville. Nashville is a really great musical, drama, comedy, and stuff with this really big cast. This is made in uh this is made in the seventies, I'm pretty sure. And the movie takes place during the peak of the Vietnam War and stuff and it's about uh, a lot of these country singers and basically political figures running for election and people meeting, trying to get to meet the celebrity singer and everything. And this this movie has a huge cast. It has Lily Tomlin, Shelley Duvall, Henry Gibson, uh, Karen Black. Uh, did I say Jeff Goldblum? <laughs> uh, a lot of big actors are in this movie and it's got very uh, awesome songs. The songs and the music is all great. There is some pretty good comedy. There is some moments that drag. This movie is overly long, but I was having a lot of fun with it. I liked a lot of the side stories. I loved Shelley Duvall's story and Lily Tomlin's story. I enjoyed Jeff Goldblum, a very young Jeff Goldblum in this film. He was really great. Henry Gibson is, is fantastic. He usually is fantastic, but there's just some things that didn't always add up, and I know a lot of people love this film. This is like one of a lot of people's favorite uh, Robert Altman films, and I, I really enjoy it just fine. I think this is a really great film, and I understand why people love it so much. I think it's just a really good film. It's nothing amazing. I, again, I like his more underrated films. I think those are his real gems, but this is still a really fun, comedic film with a lot of great music, and yeah, it's a good film. Coming number nine is Shortcuts. Shortcuts, this has an even bigger cast than Nashville. Like, the cast in this movie is fucking huge. This has, uh, this has, uh, Jack, Jack Lemon, Julianne Moore, Chris Penn, uh, Robert Downey Jr., again, Lily Tomlin, um, Fred Ward. Huge cast in this film. It would take me forever to name the whole cast in Shortcuts. Really great film. Again, oh, so, uh, Andy McDowell, I like her story in this movie, Andy McDowell's story, and, and then, yeah, the story with the kid, and he gets his, uh, hit by the car, and has brain damage, man, that's, oof. and, uh, there's a lot of stories that don't work in this movie, and there's some stories that are just too unlikable, but there's some stories I love, like, I love Fred Ward's story, I love, uh, Julianne Moore and Chris Penn's story, Downey Jr. is so great, there's a lot of great comedy, really great, dark comedy, the ending kind of makes no sense with the earthquake and shit like that. I'm like, okay, that just comes out of nowhere. At least, yeah, like Magnolia's ending with the frogs and stuff there. It's That's a symbolic thing about plagues and stuff. This one just comes out of nowhere and just feels a little weird and kind of tacked on. But the movie is still really great. Not all the stories work as well as other stories, but I, I enjoyed a lot of the performances. And I, I enjoyed the dark comedy. And I thought this was a better film. The Nashville. It still has the the Nashville syndrome. Why me? 
Meaning that it's overly long and it's a little crowded, but still a very good film and a really enjoyable film and definitely one of my favorites. Coming in number eight is MASH. Yes, MASH. You do the monster bash? <laughs> no. Uh, I never watched the show. Just putting that out there. Never watched the show MASH. I watched this movie years ago, like in uh, 2015, I think I watched this for the first time. That's when I wanted to do the Robert Altman list. Uh, this is one of the first Robert Altman films I watched. Not the first. One of the first. But, yeah, it was it was really good. It was really funny. It's a really good comedic war film, but also has a lot of great political satire. But also very interesting social commentary about the, the military and the government and stuff, especially during this time period. I never watched the show. I heard the show was absolutely fucking amazing. So funny. So clever. It's, just, it's so great. The movie is great. I, I There's a lot of nods to the show that I did not understand, which I'd understand better if I watched the show. But still, the movie is really good. It has a lot of great quippy, smart writing, and there's a lot of great, likable characters. I love Donald Sutherland in this film. He's fantastic. And these characters are just so enjoyable and so likable. And it's just, it's so funny to see. I love comedic war films. We don't have a, a, a lot, we don't have enough comedic war films. And I think this is definitely one of the best comedic war films right there with Tropic Thunder. It's really funny, really enjoyable, but it'd be more enjoyable if you watch the show. I, I just know that for a fact. Like, there's a lot of things I just didn't get because I haven't watched the show yet. The show's on my to-do list, but yeah. Great film, but it's better if you watch the show. Coding number seven is a movie I guarantee no one would put in their top ten fair Robert Altman movies, but I fucking would because I really love this film, and that's The Company. The Company is an early 2000s Robert Altman film, and this is all about ballet. It's all about dance, and this is easily the most realistic film about ballet I have ever seen because I have only watched really fucked up movies about ballet dancing like fucking Black Swan and, and and Red Sparrow and shit like that like every movie's about ballet they're not the most pleasant films uh I've seen Save the Last Dance though it's not good but uh yes uh the company is really great it's really enjoyable I love how realistic it is showing what these dancers go through when they're in this dance program when they're part of the company and stuff, I love uh, I love uh, Malcolm McDowell as the instructor. He is so great in this film. I love Nev Campbell. Nev Campbell uh, came up with the story of this movie, and she was also a producer. And I think this was a passion project for Nev Campbell. And I feel like Robert Altman really got into this. Like he really knew how to film dance choreography incredibly well, and just it's so realistic. I love the. I love the long takes that he uses on all the dance sequences. They're all really beautifully shot. Uh, again, Nev Campbell's great. James Franco's also really good. I actually like the romance between Nev Campbell and James Franco because it didn't feel like a cliched romance. There was no, like, you know, liar revealed or misunderstanding or makeup breakup situation. They genuinely care for each other. He supports her. She supports him. And then that's it. And yeah, I really, again, I liked a lot of these dancers. I wish I wished uh, some dancers got more screen time than other dancers. They mostly focus on Nev Campbell, who is great, but there's other great, interesting dancers I wish they would focus a little more on. But again, Malcolm McDowell was great, James Franco, Nev Campbell, all the dancers, the dance sequences, the cinematography, just the sheer realism of this film is all fantastic. And it's easily one of Robert Altman's uh, most underrated films. So good. Coming in number six is Cookie's Fortune. Yes, Cookie's Fortune is not about a fortune cookie, but still. It's about a woman named Cookie, and her fortune is not so good. Uh, Cookie's Fortune is about this old lady, and basically she's almost fed up with her life and everything, and she passes away. I will not say how, but she passes away, and they think, uh, the people in the town think she, think she was murdered. And they think her uh, her butler, her uh, basically her assistant, I, it's a butler, but yeah, her butler slash assistant, who's also like one of her best friends, they think he killed her and he wanted to kill her to take her money. But it turns out no one killed her, but they think he, he killed her, so they lock him in prison. And there's a group of people that stand for him and they don't want him in jail because they know he's innocent, like Liv Tyler and Chris O'Donnell and stuff. And... 
Then there's uh, Cookie's sister, played by Glenn Close. She wants to put him in prison, and she wants to basically take all her money and take all her possessions and stuff because she never, she can never stand her sister and everything. Also, during this time, the town's like putting on a local play and all that shit and stuff. And this is a straight dark comedy, and I really, really enjoyed this film. I thought I had a lot of fun with it. I love the characters. I love the police officers. I I even enjoy how crazy Glenn Close is. Glenn Close is in this movie. She is really great in this film. I um I enjoyed Liv Tyler too. Liv Tyler's an actress I always enjoy, but she was really great in this film. And I thought this was a very funny film, a really uh, heartwarming film, a very tragic film, a very dramatic film. And it just shows again a realism about a small community. And yeah, I thought this was a great film. And Definitely a film that I don't think a lot of people have seen, but if you're a Robert Altman fan, definitely you've seen this one, and you can understand, this movie's awesome. Coming in number five is a western, McCabe and Mrs. Miller. McCabe and Mrs. Miller stars Julie Haggerty and Warren Beatty. This is a very older uh, Robert Altman film, and this is a very more low-budget indie film. Especially during the 1970s, you can tell this is a very low-budget film, and I think this movie's so good. Incredibly well acted. This movie, again, was way ahead of its time. It was really raw film. This is a really dark film. and Basically, it's a, it's a western about a guy starting his own brothel with another lady and stuff. And just the, 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 the business aspects of starting a brothel. And also dealing with really bad and evil cowboys and stuff. And this is a really, just again, not the most pleasant watch. But it's so fucking good. Like, Warren Beatty and Julie Haggerty are both incredible in this film. They both give amazing performances. Amazing performances. The score is fantastic. The music is amazing. It just fits so well with this really dark tone. The action that's in it is good. You can tell there's a, this movie is a very low-budget film. Just the way uh, the camera work is. and Even some of the editing is a bit choppy. You can tell this is a very low-budget Western, but I still think it really works really well, and I think this has some really compelling characters. It has that brutal rawness in it, and I think it's one of the most uh, gritty Westerns out there, and I can't help but appreciate it. it, it it's very low-budget feel, and it might like off-put some people, but I think this movie is absolutely fantastic. Coming in number four is another very underrated Robert Altman movie. And the thing is, this is actually his last movie. That's the movie A Prairie Home Companion. A Prairie Home Companion, again, has a humongous cast. This has Meryl Streep, Ke Kevin Klein, Tom Lee Jones, Lindsay Lohan, Lily Tomlin, Woody Harrelson. Huge stat cast. All fantastic in this movie. Again, this is about country singers and stuff. And it's basically about... This, uh, this theater, and it's closing down for the last night, and it's all these performers performing for this one last show, and it's off. Oh, it's so good. It's funny. It's got great, enjoyable characters. I love Tommy Lee Jones' random role in the film. Even Robin Williams, his random part in the film is really great. Again, I just love these characters, and all these great A-list actors give such fantastic performances. This is just such a fun, delightful film with a lot of great, amazing uh, country songs. I'm not a huge country fan, but the music is so freaking good. The characters are so endearing. The writing is just so snappy. Robert Altman's direction is just so freaking solid. Absolutely love this film. This is his last movie, and honestly, this is a great movie. This is going to be your final film. This is so freaking good. It's a way better last film than, like, Alfred Hitchcock and stuff, and Sidney Poitier and everything. They're directing last films that aren't the greatest, but this is a great final film. It's kind of like uh, Stanley Kubrick with Eyes Wide Shut. Not everyone loves Eyes Wide Shut, but I think that's one of his best films, and it's his last film. Same goes to Robert Altman. This is one of his last films. Not a lot of people think this is one of his best, but I think it's one of his best. It is amazing. Coming at number three is Gosford Park. Yes, Gosford Park. Well, I call it Murder Mystery Downton Abbey. This is a solid flick, a solid British murder mystery. Again, it's very Downton Abbey. I feel like Downton Abbey borrowed a lot of tropes for Gosford Park. From Gosford Park. For Gosford Park. Great movie. Again, Stellar Cast is a Robert Alden movie. You gotta get always a big, huge A-list cast. This has Ryan Phillippe, um, Clive Owen. Uh, it has... Um, Emily Watson, Helen Mirren, Michael Gavin, 
basically it's about all these like high class and low class people, you know, the rich people and uh, the servants and stuff, higher level, lower level people, all communicating with each other and stuff. They're all throwing a weekend get together and then someone gets murdered and they have to basically find out who did it and stuff. But it's mostly a character study about all these people and it's about classism and stuff and about all these individual characters and their purpose of being at this party and basically what their future holds in store for them and everything. Maggie Smith also is in it. Again, down to Abby and Shane. But great performances by the whole cast, the production, costume. I love the intrigue. I love the ending to this movie. It's an ending I really did not see coming. It's really well done. It's not really about the murder. It is about these characters and they're all fascinating characters portrayed by great actors. Wonderfully directed. This is a great great Robert Altman movie. This is actually, I think, the first movie I watched of his, and I loved it. It was, like, my favorite, but then I watched these two other ones, and then they became my favorite. My favorites, but Gosford Park, still great. Coming in number two is The Long Goodbye. The Long Goodbye stars Elliot Gouge. Yes, you might know him from Friends as Ross and Monica's father. In this one, he plays a private investigator, and basically, he's investigating this murder that happened to his best friend, is it was accused of murdering his wife and then his best friend committed suicide and he basically wants to find out what really happened so he investigates it and everything and who was involved his friend also all uh, his friend also owed these crime bosses money and they want to collect from him there's also this girl in the neighborhood that needs his help and it's all connected with each other and this is a great crime dramatic thriller Fantastic film. Elliot Goat is so... I love his character. This character is so great. One of my favorite movie characters. He's such a smartass, and I love a good, smartass, witty character. And Elliot Goat does a fantastic job. He is so friggin' awesome in this movie. So good. Uh, I love the scene when like, he goes to prison in the first act. Really friggin' funny shit. Uh, I love the tracking shots. I love the song, The Long Goodbye. John Williams did a fantastic job. Uh... Again, Robert Altman, Robert Altman's direction is so freaking good. The ending is fantastic, a wicked ending. It just nothing says goodbye like a bullet. It's just such a great movie. This almost made my number one, but my number one, it's my number one for a reason. It's just so good, but this one was really close. Long goodbye, fantastic. And my number one favorite Robert Altman movie is The Player. It's, it's The Player. The Player... Fantastic film, amazing film. Tim Robbins, so good. It's a movie. It's a it's a movie about the movie industry, the realism of the uh, the, the film industry, and how just corporate it can be, how manipulative it can be, how corrupt it can be, how greedy it is, and just how it turns people into very despicable people. Tim Robbins is one of the most despicable assholes out there. Does a great job. Would be Goldberg is also in the film. She's great. Fred Ward, fantastic. A lot of great actors in this movie. All give great performances. I love the opening shot to this film. So well done. I love that it's like a comedic film, but also a thriller because it's about Tim Robbins. He's getting these threats and it feels like someone's out to kill him and everything. How that all unravels is really good. Just the way they show the realism of the, you know, the darkness and the grittiness of the film industry is just, it's so great. It's darkly comedic. It's very dramatic at times. It's very edgy and thrilling. Beautifully shot. Great soundtrack. Wonderful performances with a big cast. I absolutely love this movie. I find it very underrated because a lot of people don't talk about this film enough. But easily, it's easily Robert Altman's best film. It is just so good. That was my top 10 favorite Robert Altman movies, in my opinion. So in the comment section below, please tell me what are your top 10 favorite Robert Altman movies in your guys' opinion. Did you create this top 10 list? Or do you have other favorites? Well, let me know. Comment below. Let me know. And as always, if you like this video, please like subscribe to this channel and join the dark side.